Assalamualaikum everyone. I'm Aisha Fayaz. I'm an equity research analyst at Kcrib Securities. I welcome you all to the fourth quarterly briefing session for Fuji Foods Limited. We're delighted to have uh, the management of the company. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Usman Ahmed, who's the CEO of the company, and Mr. Vaseem Heather, who's the CFO of the company, and Mr. Khurram, who's the CCO of the company. So before we begin the presentation, I'll uh, share the layout that uh, the speakers are going to uh, begin with a small, will, will begin with a small presentation and that will be followed by the question and answer session. Uh, all the virtual participants are requested to put their questions in the chat box. Uh, we'll take the questions from the virtual participants first and then we'll take the questions from the physical participants. Uh, with that, I would request uh, the uh, management to please uh, begin the presentation. I'll just share the screen with you in a bit. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Aisha. So we can start. Um, yeah, next slide. Yeah, so as I always begin, um, even in our last investor briefing, we started with the two very strong strengths, the pillars that Fuzzy uh, Foods has. One is the portfolio. When you look at the dairy landscape in Pakistan, our portfolio is one of the most complete ones amongst the dairy companies. And a very strong shareholder patronage being the other one. With the massive organizations like Mari Gas, Fuzzy Fertilizer, FFBL amongst the few, within the group. Uh, we have a very strong, and Askari Bank as well, amongst others, we have a very strong uh, shareholder patronage. Uh, Just a second. Push the right side. There is, yeah, so. Sorry. Just a little bit of where we are coming from. Uh, if you recall in 2022, uh, the world was recovering from a post-COVID supply chain issues, which were leading to a lot of transit times, inflation. And then we had Ukraine war, which impacted the pricing of a lot of raw material. Uh, you add that to a particular situation in Pakistan, where was devaluation, the inflation was at a record level for most of 2022. And then something that affected dairy industry in particular were the two climate-related instances of a heat wave in April followed by floods. As a result, a cost creep of nearly two billion hit the business, which we had to surmount during the course of the year. Next slide. Uh, so what the good news is that we finished the year at a 43.8% top line revenue growth. So amongst the dairy companies, we are one of the fastest growing companies in Pakistan, and we'll touch on that later. Um, our gross profit also grew by 5.4%. The EBITDA, we were able to overcome the cost creep that we showed in the previous slide, slide of 2 billion and close at a negative EBITDA of uh, 380 billion. Uh, and the profit and loss after tax were 2.1 billion. What you need to realize here is out of the 2.1 billion, 1.2 uh, was the interest cost, which arose during the course of the year. And we'll talk about later what we plan to do uh, with that going forward. But like I said earlier, the good news is, first of all, not only have we grown uh, over last year by 43%, 43.8%, the growth trend has continued right throughout the year. The quarter and quarter revenue growth from 4% in second quarter, 38, third, and 19% fourth, has actually led to, next slide, a recovery in EBITDA. You can see the journey that the business went through where uh, we had to, oh, the, the middle quarters is where the inflation hit us really bad. But our strategy in terms of portfolio and our ability to take pricing helped us not only grow volume, but also uh, bottom line through EBITDA. And we were able to uh, exit the year at a positive EBITDA, reported of 383 million. And if you adjust it for the one-time sales tech provision, it is still 77 positive for the portfolio. Likewise, the same is reflected in fact, uh, just like EBITDA, the loss uh, has been drastically reduced to 225 million last quarter. 
So all of this came back at the uh, came and she came about at the back of this strategy. Uh, this is what we presented to you in the last quarter as well. So the strategy is based on three pillars of growth, reducing cost, and improving the capability throughout the organization. Um, will take well, Bismillah uh, Rahman Rahim. Yeah, I think uh, first was to fuel in the growth. And uh, only volume-centric growth was not uh, what was needed for the organization to uh, walk, walk on the uh, turnaround path. So it was all about focusing on the margin equitable portfolio. And what is the margin equitable portfolio? It has a couple of definitions when we explain that. One is where the absolute contribution margin of the organization is healthy. And secondly, these are the categories where which are price inelastic. Uh, our edifice of the organization was built around, as you see, the commoditized portfolio, which per se is Dosti, which was a liquidity whitener. Uh, the organization had a huge dependence, both in terms of volumetric and also in terms of the value centricity on that particular category. Now, that particular category, whenever the inflation had hit uh, the industry and industry had taken a two to five rupees price increase, uh, the category tanked. And I'm talking about the liquidity whitener category. Vis -a -vis, um, if you look at milk, butter, cream, cheese, there has been price increases, and those categories have been very price inelastic. Like in uh, in 2022, only milk category took a 38% price increase. Uh, Vis-a-vis, in 2021, it took only a 7% price increase, and yet the industry had grown, and all the players uh, uh, had also shown a good growth in that. Um, so idea here is to uh, sell a margin equity portfolio and a portfolio where we can pass on the inflationary pressure, which is a very, very um, real reality or a harsh reality of Pakistan. It seems to be uh, not going anywhere. Next slide. Um, if I talk of like what we have done uh, in those times when Usman has said that in April, the company would have seen about 2 billion rupees impact on EBITDA riding on the spectacular inflation that we experienced. So from a fueling growth point of view, we were able, not, not that we were, on, we were able to sell more, but we were able to sell in the right portfolio. So overall volume growth was 9%, value growth was about 49% if I talk of the total 4G foods. Milk alone had grown 66%. Now I think it's very important to give a bit of a contextualization that the milk as a category, UHT milk as a category grew by 5% in Pakistan and Noorpur happened to be the fastest growing uh, milk in the, in the country. Um, at the same time, this negative 21%, the value increase of liquidity right now was also 6%. But the volume was as per the strategy. Um, and I will show you in the route to market uh, slide going forward that how we uh, align the entire organization, our investment and our route to market on the margin centric portfolio. Our B2B uh, food services and our institutional business had a massive growth and I will again see the, you will again see the contextualization in the next slide. Um, another value added category like flavored milk, we grew by 35%, notebook grew, cream, we grew by 62%. Butter, we grew by 5%, we happen to be the market leader. Uh, we are the market leaders uh, by very far distance uh, on butter. So this 5% volume increase also uh, replicates 18% value increase that we witnessed in Button uh, for the year 2020. Next slide, please. So when we say that fueling growth, fueling growth had two, three dimensions for the organization, the way we wanted to drive the commercial strategy. One was to grow in the consumer business, the business that we see at our uh, journal trade, international modern trade, local modern trade, where the consumers buy them. And we grew um, very well uh, in that particular category. The second bit was uh, the B2B business, the food services business where we go as an ingredient. Now I'm very proud to tell that while there's a lot of uh, uh, import challenges in Pakistan, prior to those challenges had hit, uh, Noorpur was and is the 100% exclusive cheese partner for McDonald's. Our volumes of cheese in McDonald's have grown by three times versus 2021. Uh, we are the exclusive 100% uh, cheese partners for KFC. Our volume and value has grown by two and a half to three times again for KFC as well. At the same time, when we say that, so one is the GT business, consumer business, other the ingredient business where restaurant businesses comes in. And the third and the very big part was the institutional business. 
Now, army happens to be a very big institution, and we draw a lot of synergies within the group. We are the conglomerate of about 24 very big organizations in Pakistan. So we were able to spread our wings in that particular area as well. So a massive growth did come from 1.7 billion to almost double uh, the number in 2022 uh, from our food services business. And also we are very proud uh, suppliers of butters and other uh, key products and commodities uh, to one of the biggest multinational jewelry dealers as well. Now, all this, when we were moving the needle in terms of increasing our retail footprint, our consumer business, and our ingredient business in the, in the restaurant industry and in the food service industry, uh, the biggest lever for this particular growth was A, the awareness of our brand, the integrated campaigns that we did, the digital media focus that we had. But if I have to single out one key focus, that was the backbone of, of our growth was our distribution footprint. So when I say that organization moved from commodity to uh, value accretive, uh, margin accretive portfolio, we were spreading ourselves too far in Pakistan. And we were in 269 cities. We compressed ourselves in 91 cities where 95% of the value added industry volume was residing. And at the same time, we contracted our distribution, but we expanded our distribution where it did matter. So we have increased uh, the Noorpur again to 50 ml is the biggest SKU in the mill. Our growth is uh, much higher than other industry player, players. Karachi, we grew our business by 80%. At the same time, it was always also about building the capability, building the capability of how we can gather the uh, actionable insights from market. So I'm very proud to uh, uh, report that 90% plus of our distribution is now fully automated whereby we go and we have a live tracking of our uh, sales operations on a daily basis with artificial intelligence in place, which gives us the right insights and the decision-making is very, very appropriate. We have increased our um, distribution coverage by 12,000 outlets. At the same time, we have made investments on the right platform. So the 2,500 outlets, which contribute about 60 to 65% of the consumer business in the top 10 cities, uh, we have now locked them in terms of a display and also in terms of the pay for performance program. So these are the three key factors that I would have wanted to uh, speak uh, from the fueling growth point. Yeah. Uh, the second pillar of strategy was about reducing cost, particularly uh, the, at the cost side. Now, if you're operating in Pakistan, one of the biggest challenge that we've had for some time and we will continue to face going forward is the energy cost. And we carried out an in-depth benchmarking exercise for Fauji Foods versus competitor. And we realized that we need to really transform our energy footprint. And I'm very happy to report that we, as we speak, a one megawatt solar plant is in production at our plant, uh, reducing our dependence on HFO uh, by a significant amount. Secondly, the, if, if you at the daily processing depends, requires energy for two areas. One is for you know running all the plant and machinery, obviously the power, and the other is steam for managing the heat in the processing uh, function. There we were using imported coal. And again, we have shifted completely to a green biomass solution where we buy crop shavings, which the farmers are otherwise going to burn from our neighborhood area in Balwal, close to the factory, and we utilize it as a fuel to fire our burner. And again, from January, we have eliminated the use of coal in our factory. These two things, major areas, along with certain other processing uh, saving initiatives that are planned and moving to local packaging in one of our far largest selling SPU, we will save, inshallah, 1 billion rupees from costs alone in 2022. So this is going to improve our gross margin structure and this is exactly the kind of sustainable, uh, add sustainability to the structure of PNL that uh, we like to carry forward. As a, as a part of uh, improving our operations, we have done receivables on receivables. And we are happy to report that in quarter 1, 2022, mein our receivables as a percentage of credit sales were standing at 131%. Uh, alhamdulillah, by quarter 4, 2022, we brought that down to 50%. Uh, 
So significant cash improvement have, which has helped our operations also uh, address some of the challenges. Uh, one of the things that I think we all need to realize is that we are carrying a debt burden. Uh, 8 billion ki takriban debt hai, jo hum carry kar rahe hai, apni balance sheet ke andar. Uh, that has contributed about 1.2 billion in finance costs to the loss that we've taken in uh, 2022, uh, which is about 57% of the profit or loss after tax. Uh, ke liye, the group has uh, already gotten an approval. Aap sabko pata hoga because humne SECP pe bhi announced kiya tha, uh, PSX pe bhi announced kiya tha. We've gotten an approval for 11.7 billion injection by the group in other than rights format. Uh, what that will do is that it will help us eliminate ye jo 1.2 billion ki interest cost hai 2023 ke Obviously, those are the East May rates, both Jada Chad game where to be a estimating K, game Shala Japamari injection, Hoja Tia, to 1.5 to 1.7 billion ka expected interest cost, who Mare PNL may say Nikal Jag and Shala. So I think that will significantly help improve our bottom line, Amarijo performance, so we do profit and loss after tax, so significantly in Shala improve. So in the end, this is a slide that we presented uh, at the end of last quarter. Uh, in many ways, although a lot has changed in Pakistan, but also nothing has changed. The fact is that food and agriculture remains significant uh, going forward. Our focus has been on fixing the basis. Uh, the successful portfolio pivot that Purim talked about, where we sell more value added and less monetized today, has helped us achieve sustainability. As a management, we came to you and we said that we expect that volume growth, pricing, and cost efficiency will improve the exit margin. And we are very happy to report that this has actually happened. Our gross profit has increased twice versus what it was quarter one. And if I look at uh, what it was in quarter three and quarter four, because the inflation has increased many more, many fold. The EBITDA has increased three times from what it was in quarter one. So we feel that we have, the business is exiting at the right momentum. We have the backing of the shareholders in terms of equity injection to uh, take care of the interest costs. Uh, so we feel that we are entering 2023 with excellent momentum. Uh, thank you to the team for giving us a detailed presentation. Uh, we're opening the floor for the Q&A session. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, that will begin the questions from the virtual participants. And uh, you may write the questions in the chat box and I will read those questions to the management directly. Uh, so taking the first question, uh, the revenue growth by, uh, the revenue grew by 44% while gross profit increased by uh, 5.4 percent in calendar year 22. Please shed some light on it. Despite increase in proportion of margin accretive portfolio, gross margins contracted in calendar year 22. Please comment upon low single-digit gross margins, which witnessed further decline, and what sort of margin outlook should investors expect for calendar year 23? Yeah. So I think it's a very good question, um, and it is fundamental to how we are going to grow. Uh, what you've got to realize is we went through a unprecedented inflation. In a rupee terms, we were talking through billion. So we were able to overcome that, deliver a positive gross margin for last quarter, deliver a gross margin, exit gross margin, a positive gross margin of uh, I think maybe 940 million in last quarter. Uh, within the quarter, there's again an upward trajectory. So for instance, in December, we're exiting at an even heavier because you've got to realize that price increases, they have an effect as we land that. Uh, add to that, the two initiatives that have not started betting for us yet, which is solar and biofuel. So our energy bill is going to drop significantly quarter one, 2023, because these two projects are in place. Um, and with the pricing momentum carrying on, we expect the gross margin to move into healthy double digits going forward. Okay, thank you. The next question is, please share the mix of flavored milk, cream, and butter in overall sales. Does it account for 30% of revenues? And where do you see this mix in the next two years? 
Do you have the capacity to do that? Yeah, I think that uh, instead of uh, the revenue mix, uh, the, the contribution margin mix of uh, these three category is, uh, I would not, I would not indicate the exact percentage is here, but it is very sizable. Uh, and all these three categories we have been growing. So I showed the slide on which uh, uh, cream we grew more than 60%, uh, butter we grew in volume 5% and value 18%. And similarly, cheese, I said that uh, the margin negative cheese, which is uh, McDonald's, KFC, uh, and some other top end uh, accounts in Pakistan, we have almost uh, thrice the volumes. So these all categories are extremely important from a margin point of view. Uh, but from a volume contribution point of view, uh, milk uh, is about 60-62% uh, of our portfolio. Another 2025 is uh, toasty, and these have lower contribution in the volume. Okay, moving on to the next question. If we compare your margins with other packaged milk companies, there is a very wide gap. Although the market is somewhat different, but when looking at Prema gross margins and e food gross margins, there's a huge difference. Prema although operates in pasteurized milk market, but its products are very similar to yours and it enjoys very robust gross margins. So can you please comment on this gap and where do you see your margins going forward? Benchmarking research, not just with Prema, but other leading dairy companies. And we have a fairly good idea where do we land and how do we land there. In order to get there, the first step was actually to achieve the portfolio pivot to sell more value added products. Because in that case, you can pass on the inflation and take prices. And that is that step we've taken. Uh, that is why that in 2022, in a year that we made loss, we still spent nearly 250 million rupees more on marketing. Because this is where we spend behind the brand and we carry that investment. So that first step is done. The second step was to bring the operational efficiencies. And like we said, we plan to bring up the COGS down by nearly 1 billion rupees in 2023. Uh, it's not difficult to calculate the impact this will have in our <clears throat> gross margin improvement alone. So that's why I would uh, say that we expect this to be a healthy double double digit gross margin going into 2023. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Uh, can you also please share the uh, volumetric growth for each of the product uh, that you've mentioned in your product mix? Yeah, I think the milk grew by 66%. Uh, butter grew by 5% in volumes. Uh, cream grew by more than 60%. Uh, and our margin negative cheese volumes uh, uh, almost uh, tripled uh, in major accounts like McDonald's and KFC because of uh, the 100% supply that we are doing right now. Okay, that's great. Is there any other potential B2B on your list to collaborate with? Yeah, I think like we are, uh, we have uh, we have a very diversified portfolio, uh, both in terms of the products, commodities, and ingredients. And as we sh we had already shown that our volume, our value in B2B has almost doubled this year versus last year. Uh, we are working on some very interesting propositions, uh, both within Pakistan and also these. Uh, there are some very good uh, and exciting export opportunities where the rupee devaluation has uh, created a lot of headwinds for the businesses. There is a one tailwind that we become very relevant when we compare ourselves in the value added, high shelf life products uh, with a global GDP. Uh, this is making the uh, equation uh, uh, pretty interesting uh, for us. Uh, so B2B is a, is, a, is a sizable business for us uh, with the potential, not in percentages, but in billions. And we are very much cognizant of that. And as we speak, uh, there are some very exciting opportunities, big opportunities growing up. And once we uh, kind of materialize them and have them uh, uh, in our hand, we will reflect it to the shareholders. Okay, great. Um, 
So the next question is, what is the product mix and market share in each category? So you talked about the product mix and if you could, you know, share the market share in each of the categories, so that would be great. Yeah. I think um, before October 2021, there was a very, uh, there was a very independent and robust uh, uh, retail audit by AC Nielsen uh, used to exist in Pakistan. Yeah. At this point of time, some players are doing it uh, sporadically, but it does not have a national coverage which can be reported. The way we measure the market shares is through um, our proxy on the on the on the packaging data and kind of calibrating it uh, with the market in terms of the facing shares and the share of shelves that we have. Uh, with that, as I said, that category of UHD milk has grown by five percent we have grown by 66%. We are still distant number three player, but we have gained the highest uh, growth this year. Uh, we anticipate our market, and I think I, uh, I, this is not a reportable one, this is not authentic. This is as per our best estimations, we follow some methodology to that, uh, which is followed all across the globe, wherever the uh, independent retail audit is not existing. We have about six and a half to seven percent of share in wealth. Uh, but I think I would repeat, we are the fastest growing. Similarly, in butter, uh, the estimation is that we have about uh, 52 to 55 percent of the market share. Uh, cheese is a very big market. In cheese, we are very small. But if I um, seg if I if I kind of uh, desegment the cheese, if you look at the premium uh, slices. We have a very high share in terms of uh, KFC, McDonald's, Hardee's, Pizza Hut, Johnny and Jugnos, Smash Burgers, and many other premium accounts. Uh, mozzarella cheese, uh, we are a bit down because one of our uh, key collaborator is going through a revamp and they are coming up uh, very strongly. We were their sole uh, uh, distributors as well. But in the mass market of cheese, uh, because we um, we believe in the in the in the high quality product, and we want to give it to at the best price to the consumers and the customers who use it as an ingredient. At this point of time, the bottom of the pyramid, uh, uh, we are not very strong in. Uh, cream again, we are fastest growing, but we are very small. Uh, Nestle has a very high share in cream, followed by Alpers um, and butter. We are the market. Okay, um, the next question is, do you think the inflation will hit the demand of packaged milk and value-added products? Customers uh, will move to local alternatives? Um, so I think there are two parts to this question. I think the inflation will hit the business. That's very clear. Uh, the different categories will react differently to that. Along with inflation, what we should expect in the summer of this summer, in the of 2023, is that there will be a raw milk shortage, which means that the demand of packaged milk will actually go up. So if the, the, there is an opportunity for dairy players, if they can manage the supply chain better now, when we are in the flesh season, where the milk is abundant, then there's an opportunity to actually quite sell. There's an opportunity for growth going into quarter two and quarter three. These will be difficult times. These will be complex. But typically, if I look back at my experience of dairy industry in Pakistan, the inflationary times are also an opportunity to grow volumetrically and also in terms of value. So yes, there will be inflation. It will impact our cost of doing business, but it will also present an opportunity for volume growth because as you can imagine, uh, I expect the productivity of the farmers' herds to go down because they've not been able to buy proper feed for their animals. Because of the devaluation, the import of skim milk powder is next to nothing. Nobody knows at what value will they actually be able to land the product. So all the agents in Karachi and all over the country are dry. So which means there is going to be a big demand of milk, uh, especially going into lean months. So yes, there will be inflation, but for the industry, it will also be an opportunity to grow. Okay, great. So what is the capacity utilization for milk and cheese? So the capacity utilization, I think for cheese, we are about 40%. For uh, milk, uh, for our filling machines are close to 40%. Okay. 
So out of the total revenue number in calendar year 22, what percentage was directed to group companies and institutions? Yeah, I think like, uh, as I said that, we are, we are happy to report that we have done more than, we have done a very big business and I showed the numbers in the this slide uh, in terms of our institutional sales. Uh, still, the institutions uh, made the other organizations or within the, within the group, uh, the contribution is not more than 8%. It is about 600 percentage growth versus last year. Uh, but to me, I think the way we talk about this opportunity is that we have just tasted the appetizers. Uh, the gourmet has to follow. Uh, there is a big opportunity, and I just spoke a bit about that. Uh, within the institutions and within the biggest, very big businesses in Pakistan. Because as I said that inflation is one challenge, uh, import is a very big challenge. And if we have uh, the solution to the, to the multinationals problem, if we have the manufacturing capability and our reliance is not on the imported raw materials, uh, we would be able to report some very interesting opportunities going forward. Um, so it is 8% at this point of time. It is big in terms of the billions of rupees, uh, but the potential is huge and we are very much uh, cognizant of that. And uh, we have our uh, hands on few very interesting opportunities. Okay, so there's a follow-up question on the lower utilization. Um, that is it, uh, the reason for underutilization of capacity is constrained in raw milk collection or lower market share? Yeah, I think the uh, if you look at it, the the progression of volume is how we would want to increase the uh, so it, at the both ends actually at the milk collection and also at the capacity utilization. It's a function of how you grow the top volume. As the volume grows, you can collect more milk. That's not a problem uh, because we are already have we have a system. We have a reach into the rural areas of Pakistan. Uh, so that's collecting more milk as we grow is not, not a problem. And in fact, that is why we have been able to grow. When we grew milk by nearly 70% uh, uh, in, in terms of revenue, and I think 40, uh, 40, 48% in terms of volume, that is largely on the back of fact that we've been able to collect milk. So as we grow volume, we are confident that we'll be able to expand our milk collection. Okay, great. Uh, so the next question is out of 100% of milk consumption, what would be the percentage of processed milk in Pakistan? I read somewhere it is around 5%. And what are your strategies to transfer the one using fresh milk to processed milk? Isn't it challenging, especially being surrounded by big giants like Nestle and Enco? Yeah, so it is 5%. Uh, so this is how big the opportunity of Pakistan is. And there is a very important change here, which I would like to highlight. If you go back five years, uh, the regulators in Pakistan had a view of industry and packaged milk, which was not very favorable. Whereas today, very clearly, there are active fora in the realization that the packaged milk is safe, healthy, and nutritious is there with the regulators. So that there's a big shift. And we know through our experiences in Turkey and other countries in the world that that's the starting point of the switch. And Pakistan has finally crossed that line. Uh, now, bringing it to our business, if I put it very simply, I believe our next 10 billion of revenue is going to come without, we don't need the market to grow to get to the next 10 billion. We are 12.2 billion last year. We, the next 10 billion, we can get without even depending on market growth. But yes, long term, do we see this market growth? Absolutely. And a what basic fundamental that has changed is the orientation of regulator towards realizing the nutritional value and the safety of that. That is there more than what it was five years back. Okay. So with the recent uh, currency depreciation, can you also comment on the uh, pricing power and price strategy of the company going forward? Yeah, I think uh, we, like we talked earlier, it's our, the first pillar of our strategy was portfolio pivot to value-oriented portfolio, which, which by their very nature are price, relatively price inelastic. That is why we've been able to ride the inflation in 2022 and deliver a positive beta 
in last quarter. And that is what we expect to continue to do going forward, especially in times like these that we are in Pakistan. It is crucial to have that ability to price, but fundamental to that ability was to have a portfolio that can take price increases, a set of competition that is value oriented. So we are happy with where we are in terms of our portfolio. We are spend, spending and we will continue to spend by the brand. We now have a tough competition here, but the competition is value oriented. So we will continue to take prices blind with it. Okay, that's great. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat box. We have 68 participants who have joined us virtually. So I would request the participants to please put their questions in the chat box so that I can read those questions to the management. Meanwhile, we can uh, take the questions from the physical participants starting with users. So I received um, some questions from our clients. So I'll just read them out. Can you provide some detail on the 300 million GST reversal? Any? So basically during the year around mm -hmm. uh, March or April of current year, GST was implemented on liquidity whitener category across the industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ind milk industry, the dairy industry started provisioning for it, but mm -hmm. then we challenged it in the code. Uh, around October of 2022, finally the industry won the case. And based on that, then in December, we took a reversal. We as uh, FFL took a reversal of about 306 million. Mm -hmm. and that is why you see that our uh, quarter four EBITDA is significantly higher. But even when you take away that 306 million mm -hmm. reversal, we were still 77 million positive on the EBITDA, right? Which reflects that the changes that we've been making in the last uh, six months to try and address the, the inflationary challenges is really helping us grow the business. Other questions Can you provide a breakup of the expected 1 billion saving? Is it just energy saving or is it increase in operational efficiency? So it is on the back of energy. A significant amount is on the back of energy. It is on the back of localized one of the packaging that we were reporting earlier. It is on the back of certain processing uh, operationalization savings, which are in ground. And we've actually banked 200 million of that in 2022. So annualization of that. Um, so I think these are four major components that will uh, provide that. Uh, do you have any direct exposure to the PKR USD devaluation apart from general inflation, like any imported returns? Yeah, um, I think we directly not directly but a lot of the raw material that we use in manufacturing is obviously uh, imported. So, due to devaluation hai, and then uh, coupled with that, to LCs not so there is always that risk that we will hit karega, as an industry. Hit so, it could be inflation dollar related, mm -hmm. and then obviously, if you fuel, but it's not going to be bad, it's not going to be bad. It's something that the whole industry and all industries are part time. And then we address that as we go. There was also a question on LCS. Uh, yeah, have you faced any restrictions on importing any parts for your machineries? Yeah, uh, directly, we haven't, but. Uh, because we go through our partners, Tetra Pak, so we, there was a machinery that we were planning to import. That got delayed and it was stuck at port for about three months. Uh, we had a lot of impact. Then we worked together with Tetra Pak, with Berlin, with other suppliers, and ultimately, Alhamdulillah, we've been able to have that release. Yeah. And uh, it will start operations, I think, by mid February. So we've lost a month, month and a half in there. But that's you know working in Pakistan in these uncertain times. That's something you expect, and then you try and manage and handle. Uske liye jo hume problems aa sakte the, we address that. Ham toll manufacturing ki taraf gaye. Hamne us un products ko pe usi taraf le gaye. So we did we did let that impact the business. But yes, uski ek ek apni cost hoti hai. Usko wait karne ki delay hone ki apni charge design. So, so raw milk prices have increased considerably, considerably because of supply issues. Has the supply normalized after the floods? Yeah, um, I don't yeah, think so, honestly. Uh, looking at where our expectation was in terms of prices in, in February, 
uh, January, you see the start of a flush season and then it sort of picks up in February and then really mm -hmm. end of February, early mm -hmm. March, it peaks and then slowly it tapers off. So the price reduction expectation, Johamari tea, we've not seen that. And the uh, quantity the obviously there is so much demand. The quantity is not coming. The quantity is not coming. The quantity is not coming. The season is not On the other side, we actually started seeing the prices or prices on the rise, which is very unheard of. Last season, can they don't expect prices to increase? And this is what we are, we are seeing right now. So I think this is Usman ne pehle zikr kiya tha ke aage jo din aayega wo bada sakht din hoga. Mujhe to lagta hai ki ye jo flush hai ye bhi it will not deliver what it used to deliver. Agar aap abhi bhi mausam ki change dekhe to main abhi Lahore se aa raha hu aaj to February start hua 26 27 degrees pe temperature chala gaya. This was exactly what was happening last year and last year then we saw the heat wave ekdam badi jaldi start hui thi and that impacted the whole uh, milk supply or dry up hona shuru ho gaya aur wo jo flash aana chahiye tha usna nahi aaya my expectation honestly i don't know what usman and ajay would think like my expectation is we would have a very difficult uh, flash mm -hmm. to difficult ho gayi hoga mujhe lag raha hai ki flash flash kar ye bata do bro and you what growth trajectory do you expect on your chases do you expect any growth in international sales for cheese yeah as i said that uh, this repeat evaluation has made us very relevant in the export market. Okay. The other thing is that by virtue of uh, us being suppliers of international quick service restaurants in Pakistan, qualifies us to be on the regional portal and compete on the pricing. Uh, so these are very interesting and exciting times to uh, develop the international portfolio for our value added, not only for cheese, uh, but also butter. So these two are uh, very interesting opportunities. Okay. okay, I think that was the last question. But the questions. Yes, I think we should move to the physical questions if we have any from the participants. Up, Miss Agar, this is Please. Hello. 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 नूरपुर दूध है हमारा दोस्ती मीट में टी वाइटनर है नूरपुर मक्खन है सोल्टेड अनसोल्टेड और स्लाइटली सोल्टेड के अंदर चीज में हमारा मोजरेला और चेडर 200 ग्राम के ब्लॉक्स हैं और चेडर के स्लाइसेस हैं 200 ग्राम के और दो के जी का मोजरेला ब्लॉक है और दो के जी का चेडर ब्लॉक है हमारी क्रीम है नूरपुर की डेरी 30 परसेंट फैट के साथ और हमारा फ्लेवर्ड मिल्क है जिसमें हमारा चॉकलेट है बादाम जाफरान है स्ट्रॉबेरी है आ, ये हमारे प्रोडक्ट्स हैं जैसे मैंने बताया कि हम पिछले साल हमने तकरीबन छियासठ परसेंट से अपने दूध का वॉल्यूम ग्रो किया जो कि पाकिस्तान में जो कैटेगरी की ग्रोथ है उसका तेरह गुना ज्यादा है कैटेगरी अभी बहुत गुंजाइश है और अभी बहुत गुंजाइश है और तो जो आज सारी प्रेजेंटेशन आपको दी वो दी कि हम इस वक्त क्या कर रहे हैं जो हमें कॉन्फिडेंट बनाता है कि आगे की अपॉर्चुनिटीज को हम कैसे कैपिटलाइज कर सकते हैं आई होप कि मैंने आपके सवाल का जवाब दिया आपकी ये आप जो ये डेयरी मिल्क वगैरह आपका कोई यहां पर है अपना डेयरी फार्म वगैरह नहीं जी हम लोग مختلف मॉडल्स हैं हम लोग जो हैं हमारे अपने फार्म्स नहीं है लेकिन हमारा मिल्क कलेक्शन का सेंट्रल पंजाब और साउथ पंजाब जो कि दूध का बहुत बड़ा गढ़ है वहां पर हमारे तकरीबन 290 सौ नब्बे कलेक्शन सेंटर्स हैं। इसके अलावा हमारे बड़े फार्म्स के साथ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट है मेगा फार्म्स के साथ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट है और छोटे फार्मर्स से हम सेल्फ कलेक्शन करते हैं तो इस वक्त हमें कोई ऐसी जरूरत महसूस नहीं होती कि हम अपना फार्म सेटअप करें आ, लेकिन बहरहाल हमारे मिल्क कलेक्शन सेंटर्स पूरे सदर पंजाब और सेंट्रल पंजाब जो कि डेयरी का गढ़ है वहां पर मौजूद है जो 
देता है जी सर जो हमारा बिल्कुल वही मॉडल है जो कि नेस्ले और एहरो का है उसी तरह हम फार्मर के थ्रू दूध कलेक्ट करते हैं और उसको अपनी फैक्ट्री तक लेकर आते हैं तो जाहिर है जिस तरह हम मार्केट में उनसे कम्पीट करते हैं कंज्यूमर के साथ उसी तरह हम फार्मर भी उनसे कम्पीट करते हैं तो दोनों तरफ कॉम्पिटिशन अच्छा वो टाइम थोड़ा कम है लोग काफी है तो बाकियों को भी सवाल है सर अगर आप इसे ब्लॉक एक्शन में रखते हैं तो टाइम हमें और भी मिल जाता है हमारा टाइम तो एक घंटा तो आने जाने में तलाश करने में आपने इतना अच्छा ये रखा यहाँ पर बहुत अच्छा रखा आपने कराची में लेकिन आपने वहाँ से अचानक क्यों हटा दिया स्टॉक एक्सचेंज आपको एक प्रॉपर जगह थी वहाँ पर आप जाते तो आपको ज्यादा लोग मिलते और आपको ज्यादा सवाल जवाब सुनने को मिलते और आपको कुछ इम्प्रूवमेंट होती आप जो हासिल करना चाहते थे वो मकसद आपका ज्यादा हासिल होता बिल्कुल सही फरमा रहे हैं आप इसमें और भी दोस्तों ने यही मशवरा दिया है तो अभी तो कोविड के पास से हम जूम पे कर रहे थे हमने कहा एक दफा कराची आते हैं नेक्स्ट टाइम इंशाल्लाह ताला जैसे आप फरमा रहे हम जरूर कोशिश करेंगे कि स्टॉक एक्सचेंज कुछ करने के बावजूद सर ये आपका जो है क्यों जा रहा है सर अगर आप लॉस को हमारे ब्रेक डाउन करें तो पहली बात है आपका ग्रोथ भी है लेकिन आप लॉस भी बहुत अच्छा सवाल है सर इसको थोड़ा सा ब्रेक डाउन करते हैं दो अरब का हमारा लॉस था एक अशारिया दो अरब की इंटरेस्ट कॉस्ट है आठ अरब का डेट है कर्जा है कंपनी पे और ये पिछले कोई समझ लीजिए तकरीबन आप तो नौ साल होने को आए कि ये कर्जा चढ़ा गया और अब आपको पता है कि जिस तरह सूद की शरह में इजाफा हो गया तो ये कर्जा जो एक अशारिया दो अरब दो हजार बाईस में था ये आगे एक अशारिया पांच अरब में पहुंचा रहा अच्छी बात यह है कि जैसे आपके इल्म है कि हमारा राइट इशू एफ सी सी पी अप्रूव है हमारे जो स्पॉन्सर्स कंपनीज हैं वो ग्यारह अरब रुपए इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं कंपनी उसमें हम दो काम करें सबसे पहले हम अपना सारा कर्जा उतार दें तो अगले साल में जाते हुए ये एक अशारिया दो अरब जो 2022 में का जीरो हो जाए लेकिन आपका कैपिटल तो बढ़ जाएगा ना फिर आप डिविडेंड देने की पोजिशन में कैसे आएंगे जब आप इतने बिलियर्स का राइट इशू करने के बाद या मिलियंस का जो भी करेंगे कितना कर रहे हैं राइट इशू और आपके स्पॉन्सर ही राइट को करेंगे तो पब्लिक तो करेगी नहीं मैं स्पॉन्सर ठीक कर रहे मैं वही बात कर रहा हूँ स्पॉन्सर तो वो कब तक इस कर्जे को आप उनको किस शराइ पे कर्जा नहीं है शेयर इश्यूंस है राइट अदर देर राइट में है तो वो कर्जा नहीं दे रहे वो हमें शेयर दे रहे हैं तो वो जिस वक्त हम इस काबिल हो जाएंगे कि हम डिविडेंड देंगे तो जो डिविडेंड बाकियों को मिलेगा वही डिविडेंड उनको मिलेगा सर इतना शेयर कैपिटल आपका बढ़ जाएगा तो आपका दो लाख का उसका जो डिविडेंड है वो भी बहुत टाइम निकल जाएगा आप नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स कितने बढ़ जाएंगे आपके जब आप ये मतलब आप कह रहे हैं जितने बिल्कुल आप सही भी बता रहे हैं लेकिन इसका सोल्यूशन रिक्वेस्ट ये था कि हम या तो कंपनी को प्रॉफिटेबल करें उसके लिए इम्पोर्टेंट था कि कैश इन जाए अगर आप देखें हमारा पूरे साल का लॉस जैसे उस्मान कह रहे थे वो टू पॉइंट वन बिलियन रुपए के करीब है उसमें से वन पॉइंट टू वन पॉइंट थ्री बिलियन सीधा इंटरेस्ट कॉस्ट तो ये जिस वक्त ग्यारह बिलियन डलेगा तो इसमें से ये वन पॉइंट टू बिलियन का इंटरेस्ट कॉस्ट दो हजार तेईस में खत्म हो जाएगा ठीक है तो सडनली वो जो टू पॉइंट वन बिलियन से है वो आपका एक डिफरेंट जगह ये कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि तकरीबन एक बिलियन की मरीबॉस से रिंग्स आए जिस तरह उस्मान ने जिक्र किया था फिर हम सिग्निफिकेंट अपनी सेल्स ग्रोथ की तरफ जा रहे हैं तो ये सारी चीजें मिलके वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग इन शाह के दो हजार तेईस वी विल बी इन मच बेटर पोजिशन देन वी पेन जी बिल्कुल वो चीज भी आपकी कैश होगी जी बिल्कुल इसके जी अप्रूवल्स के लिए गैंग में है एस ने अप्रूवल दे दिया हुआ है जो हमारी इन्वेस्टिंग कंपनीज हैं उनमें से नेपरा के पास दो के अप्रूवल्स गैंग में भी एक्सपेक्टिंग कि वो एनी डे इन द नेक्स्ट टू थ्री वीक्स इन उनके भी अप्रूवल मार्च में आ वी आर होपिंग के इनशाला मार्च में ये क्लोज हो जाए आप क्या अंदाजा लगा रहे हैं आप कब तक ये लॉस खत्म कर देंगे और प्रॉफिट में आ जाएंगे देखिए हमारी एक्सपेक्टेशन ये है कि 23 एंड या 24 मिडिल तक हम प्रॉफिटेबल हो जाना चाहिए एट द बॉटम लाइन लेवल 
अब आगे जो चैलेंजेस मुल्क में आते हैं ये वो चीजें हैं फिर वो देखेंगे उसके हिसाब से तो जैसे अभी पहले बात करी हमारा जो साल अपनी कॉस्ट ऑफ गुड सोल्ड में सिग्निफिकेंट सेविंग टू दी अमाउंट ऑफ वन बिलियन रुपीज हम कोर्सी कर रहे हैं दो हजार तेईस अलोन उसके साथ फॉर्चुनेटली अलहमद ला हमारी वॉल्यूम ग्रोथ बड़ी पॉजिटिव ट्रेंड्स हैं मेंटर हो रहे हैं इन तीन चीजों को फैक्टर इन करें हम एग्जैक्ट तो जाहिर है यहाँ पर डिस्क्लोज नहीं कर पाएंगे बट मैनेजमेंट फील्स कि हम काफी बेहतर पोजीशन में होंगे बाकी आप सब लोग खुद एनालाइज कर लेते हैं बैलेंस शीट हम लोग से बहुत बेहतर तो ये इन फैक्ट में जो हमारी कॉन्वर्सेशन हुई है यू कैन फॉर्म अपनी तो ये बैलेंस शीट अभी आपसे डिस्कस कर देते कोई तरीका करते हैं कि आप तक पहुंच जाए अगर आप ईमेल लिखवा दें तो हम कोशिश करेंगे कि हम सब सब लोगों को ईमेल करें अपने रिजल्ट लाइक ऑल अदर कंपनीज हम पी एस एक्स पे लोड करते हैं तो हमारे रिजल्ट जैसे ही रिलीज होते हैं वो इमीडिएटली अवेलेबल हो जाते हैं पी एस एक्स के ऊपर तो आप लोग वहां से भी देख सकते हैं और प्लीज अपने बिल्कुल दे जाइए ईमेल एड्रेसेस तो हम मैं आपसे यही कहूंगा कि मेरे पास ईमेल एड्रेस नहीं है तो मैं आपको इसीलिए कहूंगा कि हार्ड कॉपी आ गई अगर आप पहले देखिए तो पहले कारोबार की स्ट्रेटेजी दैट डिटर्मिन योर पोर्टफोलियो स्ट्रेटेजी जब हमने अपनी पोर्टफोलियो स्ट्रेटेजी चेंज की एंड इट वॉज अ चेंज हम अठहत्तर फीसद दोस्ती बेचने वाली कंपनी थे ये रियलिटी है उसका रिजल्ट ये था कि हम देखते थे दूर दराज जगहों पे जहां को नजर नहीं आता क्योंकि 80 फीसद हमारा वहां से आ रहा था हमने 2022 में वो स्ट्रेटेजिक शिफ्ट किया और हमने कहा नहीं हमने इसको सस्टेनेबल बनाना है और उसी के हिसाब से हमने रूट टू मार्केट स्ट्रेटेजी बनाई और चेंज की वो रूट टू मार्केट स्ट्रेटेजी में हमने एक्चुअली फोकस किया ऑन ओनली फिफ्टीन टाउन फ्रॉम 290 टाउन्स तो दो शहरों से हम 15 शहरों पर फोकस देता है उसका नतीजा क्या हुआ और फिर हमने साथ ही ऑटोमेशन में इन्वेस्ट किया कैपेबिलिटी में इन्वेस्ट किया उसका नतीजा क्या हुआ कि हम ग्रो कर रहे हैं बट यूर एप्सोटली राइट डेटल फॉर इट बट ये सारा एक ये एक पूरा इस ग्रोथ को और इस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ग्रोथ को सस्टेनेबल बनाना जरूरी है और सस्टेनेबल ये मॉडल के थ्रू बनाएंगे वो मॉडल हमने क्रैक कर लिया डिजाइन कर लिया 
और इन प्लेस कर दिया अब हम उसका बेनिफिट ईयर ऑन ईयर उठाते हैं तो उस डिस्टेंस को हम ओवरनाइट कवर नहीं कर सकते ही रियलिटी है उसको हमने ऑर्गेनिकली और हेल्दी तरीके से कवर करना बट वी आर ऑफ बस मान सर बेसिकली इफ यू लुक एट द प्रोडिक्टमेंट ऑफ द डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर्स एज वेल एज द मेजर शॉप कीपर्स एज वेल एज द इंडिविजुअल्स हु परचेस योर प्रोडक्ट कंज्यूमर्स द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट इफ आई गो एंड परचेस गो टू अ स्टोर एंड आई से के आई गो टू मिल्क से या बटर से एंड सो ऑन द शॉप कीपर टेल्स मी ही आर अवेलेबल इन हियर इट्स आउट ऑफ स्टॉक आई सी तीन चार दफा मैं चेक करूंगा इसके बाद इट्स आउट ऑफ साइड आउट ऑफ माइंड राइट सो दैट इज समथिंग व्हिच टू बी ऑनेस्ट it's a long time now since for the company to like 5 6 years ago when after production uh, i mean expansion or whoever right so this is a pretty long time uh, compared to the kind of innovation taking place in pakistan karachi right now a uh, day fresh to karachi they have day fresh ko dekhe uh, or uh, adam ko dekhe adam ko that was non existed two years pehle ki aap agar aap is pe dekhenge day fresh ka milk butter uh, Prema is another problem. K Prema ka product available nahi hai, so no one wants to now keep it. Although it's a great quality product, uh, so you shouldn't be like uh, I would say. I'm mean, just as a as an as, as a suggestion that you should be looking at really like wrapping up Karachi because this is a very important uh, uh, aspect for you. Karachi, I think like uh, as I said that there the growth numbers are no difference. Karachi. Used to contribute in 2020 because we had a disruption in Karachi. For some reasons, the management decided in 2019 to stop doing business in Karachi, and our only interface for Karachi consumer was butter, and that too through the metro channel. So 2020, 2021, May Karachi used to contribute about three to four percent of our total revenue. Now our revenue growth has been thirty four percent. And Karachi contributes about twelve percent. If I only talk of the consumer business, but as you rightly said. Sky is the limit. So what we are doing, we have plans. When I say that we had seventy five hundred outlet loyalty program, Karachi does have a disproportionately high share. When we say that we are doing uh, ETL uh, complement, no, we are we have a digital marketing strategy focus with ETL complementing the digital platform. Uh, the maximum amount of uh, impressions and reach that we are trying to generate is in Karachi. Our distribution was very weak, and distribution to set up a distribution for dairy company is not easy because it has, especially a brand which has two three percent market share in the market. You have expiries, you have very high distribution support. You are subsidizing the distributor, and still distributor is not happy. You are appointing three distributors, two are leaving, one is there. You add another two, one hands on, two goes out. Finally, finally in Karachi, we have now a very good distributor. we have the same distributors which are doing say omo ice cream we have the same distributors which are doing uh, upfield blue band we are do we have the same distributors which are doing uh, the coca cola uh, cci and all that so as we said that our levers are in place uh, and there are weaknesses which i would not defend and i see those weaknesses and uh, friends like you have to hard to do that Uh, we will in Shara Tala have to tap into this. The distribution is our biggest growth in the world. Exactly. So when we look at, I think there was earlier a question: the category of what? And our view is very clear. For us, next ten billion rupees per okay. share is not going to come from category. So our biggest. That is why we feel confident about it. We have that now. We have a trusted, tried, tested system in place. And we are just using that machine to expand our distribution, and we are confident we will start seeing the results. In the <clears throat> so we don't have any more uh, questions, and it's all good. You have a question? Okay. Two basic uh, questions. Basically, one is that currently, your meat procurement is what is happening, and or going forward, even challenge like just like now, recently, H S D the price has been increased by 15 to 16 percent. और आई थिंक लास्ट एक से दो हफ्ते पहले कुछ डेयरी फार्मर्स की भी एसोसिएशन का ऐलानिया जारी हुआ था कि थर्टी टू थर्टी फाइव रुपीज पर लीटर में फार्म गेट में इंक्रीज किया जाए जब इसमें क्या व्यू आपका बन रहा है अब ये जो उसका दो कॉम्पोनेट होते हैं मीट प्राइस के एक उसी का उसका ड्रॉबल जो फार्मर की परचेज प्राइस है दूसरा उसकी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लॉजिस्टिकल कॉस्ट जहाँ पे ये सारी एच एस डी लिट करें so both components are together um, and i think what's important is <laughs> we and we as a portfolio more important 
have the ability to take the price up for the consumer and sustain our business. Uh, fortunately, we have a demonstrated ability of doing that. Uh, and Can we have planned that. So we expect the pricing to go up and the consumers uh, the price be made. मेजर तो अराउंड अराउंड जिसकी प्राइस आती है ट्रांसपेयर होते कंज्यूमर को 180 पर लीटर अराउंड इस तरीके से आ रही है तो डोंट यू थिंक यू आर पुशिंग टू मच ऑन सेल्स बाय कॉम्प्रोमाइजिंग मार्जिंस मैन पॉइंट्स काइंड ऑफ मार्जिन से ही नहीं होंगे इंस वॉल्यूम तो ग्रो होंगे ऑब्वियसली आई माय सेल्फ मैं अगर पॉल पर से तो मैंने इस महीने जो है फौजी बोल लिया है ठीक है आई एम सो इन बट इन द नियर टर्म मार्जिंस एग्जैक्टली योर ऑब्जेक्टिव जो आपने कहा और हमने ये क्यों प्रमोशन जनवरी में because we wanted you to switch in the beginning of the year so you stay with us so jab hum is promotion ki roi calculate karte hain hum ye dekhte hain humne isme kitne consumers gain kiye aur wo hamare sath rahenge pura saal to wo kya pay karte hain so that is why we have consciously front loaded the promotion taki iska benefit aapki household typical household purchase uh, ek trip size jise bolte hain wo 1.6 liter pay karte hain तो अगर हमने एक दफा इन्वेस्ट करके अट्रैक्ट कर लिया वी एक्सपेक्ट द द शॉपर द कंज्यूमर टू स्टे विद अस क्योंकि हमारा प्रोडक्ट अच्छा है कॉन्फिडेंट है इसलिए हमने प्लान करके इसको जल्दी किया एंड एट द सेम टाइम हम लोग कोई बहुत ज्यादा बिलीव नहीं करते परेनियल कंज्यूमर प्रमोशंस में लाइक मेनी अदर ब्रांड अगर आप पिछले 18 महीने देखें तो सबसे कम कंज्यूमर प्रमोशन हमने चलाया एग्जैक्टली सो बट उस्मानस पॉइंट के वी आर ऑन अ ग्रो ट्रैजेक्टरी एंड वी वांटेड टू have that growth front loaded this year and that has mashallah paid dividend sir dio par bhi hai kuch aapke tawajjuh mein mind jo aapne research ki hai export pe ji sorry main pehle ek sawal jawab kar do fir aap export pe sir hamare jaise pehle zikr hua hum do categories mein dekh rahe hain baat cheet chal rahi hai ek butter mein aur ek cheez mein abhi kyunki koi cheez block thi hum keh nahi sakte ek hame do advantages एक एडवांटेज ये है कि हम मैकडोनल्ड्स के ग्लोबल मैकडोनल्ड्स का प्रोसेस ऐसा है कि जब उनके सप्लायर बनते हैं तो आप उनके ग्लोबल सप्लायर बनते तो हमें ये उनका ऑडिट करना उनके क्रेडेंशियल लेने में तीन साल लगे लेकिन आप मिल गए तो दुनिया भर में किसी को अगर मैकडोनल्ड्स तो वो साउथ अफ्रीका में चीज मैकडोनल्ड्स शॉप है वो कहेगा चीज सप्लायर कौन है तो हमारा नाम वहां है तो हमें क्वेरीज आती रहती कुछ उनमें से मटीरियलाइज होती है कुछ नहीं होती तो अब ये हमारी इसी तरह प्रोसेस चल रहा है मिट्टी अभी मटीरियलाइज हुई है लाइक वाइज बटर में भी कुछ इंटरेस्ट हुआ है और हमारी बात चल रही है ये सर पेट्रोल की वजह से जो आपको बाल वहां से आप यहां डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन करेंगे वो आपको चार्जेस ज्यादा नहीं हो जाएंगे तो आप फिर कैसे मार्केट को कंपीट करेंगे आपका कंपटीटर जो यहां बैठा हुआ है करीब आपके आप तो दूर से आ रहे हैं जो यहां मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कर रहे हैं हां जब आप एक नेशनल बड़ी कंपनी बनना चाहते हैं तो आप कराची को जो है ना वो छोड़ नहीं सकते सबसे बड़ी पॉपुलेशन है सबसे ज्यादा कंज्यूमरिज्म है सबसे ज्यादा यहाँ पे लोग जो है वो पैसा खर्च करते हैं खाने पीने के ऊपर और बाकी चीजों में तो वो इट कम्स एट अ कॉस्ट बट वी आर विलिंग टू बेयर दैट कॉस्ट कराची कैन नॉट बी लेफ्ट आउटसाइड दिस सेम कंपनी लास्ट टू का ना सबसे ज्यादा खर्च करना है कराची <laughs> yes i think we've exceeded the time limit as well it's 505 right now and i would request the management to say the concluding remarks so that we can end the session for the day Well, thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much for your questions. It means a lot to us. What I can assure you that as management and as major sponsors, we believe in this business. We believe in the potential of the country, and we believe in our plans. Twenty twenty two, 
may look like a very difficult thing, but it has further increased our belief that we will turn this around, inshallah. The early wins that we've had are a proof that our strategy is working. And we are exit momentum, particularly quarter four results, give us great confidence going forward. So thank you very much. And thank you for your time. And thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you to the participants for joining. Take care. Allah.